Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome back uh, we last time saw that uh, when we accelerate a gas from near stagnation to very high Mach numbers actually just accelerate we won't talk about Mach number immediately if we just accelerate the gas then we found that when velocity increases temperature decreases and because of that Mach number increases much faster than the way velocity increases or the way temperature decreases. Now, we will go and see the P 0 by P expression which we wrote last time. We have this expression. Now, this expression can be expanded just by using my binomial series and uh, if we say that Mach number is small enough okay, then we can remove higher order terms of m square. Okay. Let us say we do that we will not worry about why we will just do it right now. I am continuing the series. And at last I am putting plus dot 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 ok. This is just a binomial series expansion of this whole term sitting here ok. It is a plus b to the power n which I am using binomial series to expand. Now, we will let us simplify these four terms of the binomial series. The first one gamma minus 1 will get cancelled. Here this can be simplified a little more, so I will wait one more round. What will this come out to be? Gamma minus or gamma minus gamma plus 1. So, that will just come out to be 1 by gamma minus 1 into plus I will fold and write the next one this we already did there that is 1 by gamma minus 1 the next term will be gamma minus 2 gamma. So, there will be a minus gamma plus 2. So, that will be a 2 minus gamma into gamma minus 1 cube by 8 times m power 6 plus dot dot dot. This is what we have I will go to the next board I will simplify this further. So, we will get
it will become this expression. Okay. If I go and look at uh, or Bernoulli's equation. Now, I will rewrite this Bernoulli's equation in our form P naught by P I got to this form. Now, I want to make this gamma P by rho. So, I will put gamma here and gamma here. This gamma P by rho becomes a square. So, u square by a square that will happen to be m square. So, this comes out to be 1 plus gamma by 2 m square. This is the first two terms of this full expansion we have. Okay. So, what we have done essentially is when we use Bernoulli's equation, we are using only the first two terms of our full compressible flow expression which we derived without using Bernoulli's equation anywhere in the middle. Right. So, this is the full expression. Of course, when I say Mach number is less than uh, very very small, then I can neglect all these numbers. If Mach number is more than 1, I cannot neglect m power 4, m power 6, m power 20, whatever I am going to get very high numbers. I cannot neglect any of them. So, when Mach number is very very small, then I can neglect m power 4, m power 6, etcetera. And so, I am ok with using Bernoulli's equation when it is very low Mach number cases only for linking the stagnation and static pressures. That is the way we have to look at Bernoulli's equation. Okay. Actually what we have to do is compressible flows fully. Okay. So, it so happens that uh, when Mach number becomes higher, this is not very accurate. I have to have the next term gamma by 8 m square uh, sorry m power 4 in here immediately after that. Okay. So, instead of doing that when Mach number increases instead of going and adding one more term each time, we will just use the most accurate thing which is our full expression. This is the most accurate one if we want for simplicity sake we can use this for very low Mach numbers okay, that is what we are seeing. Okay, this is just uh, one way of saying that uh, for actual cases we always have to use this case, this expression. If it is very low Mach number flows then I am ok with using Bernoulli's equation okay, which is what is done by most of the people who deal with water flowing over some bodies. Typically the velocity will be very low then we will just start using this expression, it will not be very bad for us. Okay. Now, we will go look at uh, the density variation. These expressions should just be staying in your mind forever, okay. these are the expressions you need to remember what is a rho naught by rho it is just t naught by t which is inside the bracket to the power 1 by gamma minus 1 you should just get used to that. What is 1 by gamma minus 1 really c v by r that is what I want you to remember c v by r in case if it is not air then you have to go back and think about of course, yes the value happens to be 2.5 which is what somebody here told. But we want to remember this as C V by R because that is how we derived it T D S equal to you remember that full expression C V log uh, P 2 by P 1 minus R log T 2 by T 1 from there only we are trying to get to this okay, R log V 2 by V 1 by the way. So, from there only we are trying to get to these formulae okay, where we are saying T D S equal to 0 we are setting that equal to 0 from there we are getting to all this. Okay. So, remember that and that is how you got to the C V by R formula here. Now, anyway we will try and expand this again the same formula as before binomial series
again I am folding over actually let us ignore I do not want to write any more terms we will just leave it like this anyway we are going to cancel even the last term. Okay. Now, I am going to cancel this gamma minus 1 and this one we already know is 1 by gamma minus 1 we did it just the previous time. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake here. Till here, everything is right. I just made that mistake here. Previously, it was gamma by gamma minus one minus one. Now it is not. So it should just stay as is. Uh, one by gamma minus one minus minus gamma plus one will be there. So it will become two minus gamma divided by this. So two minus gamma divided by gamma minus 1 whole square this is what it should become. Okay. Now, everything is in order again. Okay. So, now we will cancel these. So, finally, I am getting an expression 1 plus half Mach number square plus 2 minus gamma by 8 Mach number power 4 plus we ignored the next term. So, I will just be this something like this. Okay. Now, if I want to say I am allowing 5 percent variation in density to be neglected, if there is density variation between stagnation and static of the order of 5 percent change, which one will be higher? Stagnation will be higher. Why? When I accelerate the flow, the flow expands. We saw that last time. Okay, so it will be lesser density. So this ratio is always more than one. We already saw that from temperature point of view also. This term is always more than one. Okay, so I'm going to say this is more than one, which means my density has to decrease when I accelerate the flow, and I am willing to neglect five percent change in density. That's the engineering approximation. Five percent. We always keep 5 percent as engineering. Okay. If there is only 5 percent change or there is only fluctuation of 5 percent, we will say it is still constant as an engineer's way of putting things together. Okay. We do not want to worry about something that is varying less than 5 percent. Okay. So, let us assume my rho naught by rho is 1.05 roughly. If I have some such variation, what will my Mach number be? 1.05, so this will be 0 0.05 into 2, 0.1, square root of 0.1. What square root of 0.1? Roughly 0 0.32 something, okay, 0 0.31. So, this will give you Mach number or I will say m square equal to 0 0.1 which will give you Mach number of the order of 0 0.3 actually it should be 0 0.316 something like that we will just say 0 0.3 this is how remember the very first class somebody in here introduced saying like if my flow is incompressible then we will take the Mach number to be less than this value. If my Mach number is less than this number, then what will happen? This whole expression will be smaller than 1.05. Okay. So, if it is less than 5 percent change, then I can ignore it. So, I can say there is not much of change in density, that is the way we are going to handle things. Okay. So, if my Mach number is less than 0.3, then the density change in the flow is very, very small and I can ignore it. This is what most of the books will say if my Mach number is less than 0.3, it is considered incompressible. Okay. It is not really incompressible, it can be considered as incompressible. The wording in the book will be very clear, they will simply say can be considered incompressible. Okay. So, 
that is what we will be doing ok. We can say that if Mach number is less than 0.3 then of course, you can go back and use your Bernoulli's equation it will most likely be correct it will be close to the correct answer ok, but this is better. But what if engineers turn around and say 5 percent that is too stringent let us make it 10 percent anything less than 10 percent I am not bothered. So, I will say roughly that will come down to 1 by 0.9, I will give you 1.1 is most likely 1 by 0.9 ok. If I do that kind of calculation, if I say I am ok with 10 percent variation, my criterion is 10 percent let us say, density can vary 10 percent in my fluid. If I say that, then my Mach number anything less than 0 0.47 will be considered incompressible if I am ok with adjusting whatever variation is happening there that is if I am ok with saying oh there is just 10 percent we will ignore the 10 percent. If we say something like that then I can go all the way up to mark 0.47 and then say my flow is incompressible. If I am more strict and say oh 5 percent variation is too high a change I have to take into account then I will pick a 2 percent let us say I do the same set of calculations and I will get my mark number less than 0 0.2 anything above 0 0.2 my density variation will be higher and I have to consider that as compressible depending on what my setting is how much is my tolerance how much am I ready to tolerate based on that I will set different numbers ok. Most commonly agreed number for engineering happens to be 5 percent and because of that we are stuck with mark 0.3 which was here. That was the connection which we wanted to make at the very first class which we did not make long back ok. Now, we have linked all of them together right. The previously we said there were two definitions for incompressible flow one is based on whether my density is changing due to flow or not and the second one was based on Mach number which is speed of sound and uh, speed of the flow ratio of that and we wanted to find how these two are connected this is the connection and we had to wait so many classes to find the connection actually ok. Without these expressions you could not have gone any further. Now, after all this we will go back to how to solve 1 D flow ok 1 D flow if there is any area change in my flow tube I am not talking specifically about any particular flow problem yet. Once we have the ideas the tools developed we will just go and apply the tools in every possible formula every problem possible in gas dynamics books okay, we will go and start solving one by one after some time initially we are just developing the tools. So, we already have the momentum equation ready we just have to say that it is steady 1 D flow with area variation we have developed our equations for area variation possible already we had a d a possible d u everything ok. We started with control volumes that are looking like this right where area variation is possible 1 to 2 there was a area variation it is possible we already had that taken into account. So, all I have to do is just go start using that there is a minus sign we had this as one of the equations. Now, I am interested in d p by p. So, I will just divide this by p and I want to say d u by u. So, I will put a u square by u here which is equivalent to u. When I do something like this I have already assumed that u is not 0 then only I can multiply and divide by u remember mathematically correct we want to be ok. I have already assumed pressure can never be 0 which is correct pressure can never be 0 ok. When pressure is 0 there is no molecules there is no gas there is no flow. Here I am also saying the gas cannot be staying still gas is moving in my case. Now, I want to rearrange this again the same way as what we did some time back multiply and divide by gamma and choose this as gamma p by rho reciprocal is 1 by a square. So, I will get this to be minus gamma m square 
du by u. Cal. This is one of the important expressions, so I will write that separately. Next thing we want to do is go to energy equation and there we already had this kind of expression, so I will just energy expression was written as C p d t is equal to minus u d u, we had this form before where I am assuming there is no other heat transfer, there is only this exchange of heat within the gas itself, nothing else outside. Okay. Now, I want to find d t by t in terms of d u by u, I am going to do similar stuff, I will take the C p to that side, I will write d t by t u square d u by u and I will put C p t here. Now, I want to write C p in terms of a speed of sound. So, I would write this in terms of gamma and r because there is a t here. If I put gamma r t, it will become a square. So, I will put gamma r. So, what is this? Gamma r by gamma minus 1. Okay, C p is gamma r by gamma minus 1, not r minus 1, gamma minus 1. Okay, this is just the C p. So, I will take this gamma t together make it a square, there will be a gamma minus 1 sitting there. So, I can write this equal to minus gamma minus 1 times m square d u by u. Yeah, I have another expression here, I want to put that also in a box, so I will write it again. This is another expression we got. Now, I want to find d density by density. Of course, we will take the shortcut. I have p equal to r t. From here, we already derived that uh, d p by p is equal to d rho by rho plus d t by t. If you do not remember the derivation, you can derive it in any time, it is not very difficult to derive. Okay. So, now I just have to get, we have these two expressions, this one and this one we already have, we want to find d rho by rho. So, d rho by rho will be d p by p minus d t by t. Okay. So, I have this box here, this one and I have this box here everything has d u by u m square term. So, I will just put uh, in fact, it has both has minus sign also minus m square d u by u as a common factor. Now, d p by p has a gamma there and this one has a of course, it is a minus d t by t. So, I have to put a minus sign of gamma minus 1, this is what I have and this minus 1 will become plus 1 now. So, I am having minus m square du by u. I got one more expression here. I started with saying area variation, but as of now I did not even introduce any area variation d a I did not tell yet, okay. but already we see a lot of uh, insight into the flow problem already. How? Let us go look at it in terms of the last expression we derived. I will write that last expression like this d rho by rho, rho uh, d rho by rho divided by d u by u is equal to minus m square. Okay. This is your 
percentage change or a fractional change in density per fractional change in velocity is given to be this right this is actually the change in density divided by current density change in velocity divided by current velocity so it's actually the fractional change in velocity fractional change in density okay so what we are saying is the fractional change in density per fractional change in velocity is given to be minus m square okay one thing it directly tells you is it is negative which is if my fractional change in velocity is positive i am going to get fractional change in density as negative if i accelerate my density drops which we already saw in some other form last class okay it's giving you the same answer but the next thing is more important which is i'm going to say if my mach number is less than 0.3 if it is 0.3 what will be this value 0.3 square is 0.09 if it is 0.316 it will come out to be 0.1 okay then the change in density will be 10% of change in velocity which we are ready to neglect if we are ready to neglect then we'll call this flow incompressible okay i'm again giving you connection with incompressibility always you should know which is compressible which is incompressible and we'll say that d rho is approximately equal to 0 for small amps but when i go my mach number increasing as mach number increases and gets closer to 1 this number becomes very significant if it is more than 1 it's very very dramatically high if my mach number is 2 it's four times right so if there's a 10% change there's a 40% change in density if mach number is 2 okay there's more serious change if there is my mach number 3 then there is becoming minus 9 there is 10% change there is 90% change in density very very significant change okay so because of that in fact uh, this is going to tell you the physics of why nozzle flows go one particular direction we'll go and look at nozzles later but remember that this is very very important i'll write it in a different form i'm going to say modulus of d rho by rho modulus as in the magnitude okay is greater than du by u modulus the magnitude okay if or i'll say for m greater than 1 in supersonic flows the change in density due to flow is higher than the actual flow velocity change itself okay that's the important thing we are going to look at okay so if i change my density if i increase velocity by twice density drops by more than half this is the reason why you have to expand your supersonic flow if you want to accelerate you will see that again when we go to next mass equation which is the next thing immediately okay now we are going to write the mass equation we had all these equations already derived so i just have to go write one by one this is one form of mass equation we derived now we want to write everything in terms of mach number which we have been deriving today it will come out to be come out to be this form okay now there is one special thing that's happening here if i put m equal to 1 what will happen if i put m equal to 1 this whole term goes away suddenly is telling da equal to 0 okay which means area is not changing that's the first thing i want to say and somebody here said area can be minimum i don't want to accept that area can be minimum all you know as area is in an extremum it could be maximum or minimum okay we'll go deal with maximum or minimum later some other time okay yes 
there is a possibility of thinking about it that way. I want to think about it in a new dimension. I want to say that uh, the stream tube does not want to change its area if my Mach number is 1. Okay. This is a very special way of looking at it. Uh, my teacher Professor Santakumar told me this, if you are in transonic flow then the stream tubes are like metal sheets, they do not want to move just because you put an airfoil in there, they just want to go straight. It is like that. So, they do not want to change, they do not want to respond to any changes you want to make in the flow, if my flow is close to Mach number 1. That is what makes transonic flow very, very difficult to handle. Okay. We will go deal with that uh, probably sometime very late in the course, we will not do much of transonic flow in simple gas dynamics, but I will just tell you that there is a lot of problem when m equal to 1. M is uh, more than 4, uh, 3 means it is 90 percent, if uh, 4 means. Okay. So, the question is uh, if my Mach number becomes very, very high, what happens? Okay. Uh, we cannot think about it as my change is going to be 10 percent, I just gave as an example. Typical changes the flow is going to respond to will be like 0 0.01 percent itself. You are considering a case where Mach number if it is 10, then when my this is going to be minus 100, then if there is 10 percent change here, there is 1000 percent change that is not possible, yes that is right. Okay. But actually it is not percentage, I am not thinking about percent really, it is 1000 percent is 10 times, yes there is going to be such a big change in reality, okay. but nobody can ever change the flow that very high level immediately. Okay. Even a small change will immediately be having an effect, it would have changed by then. Okay. That is the supersonic flow, that is just any flow in fact, this is just coming from flow equations. I just use mass momentum energy equations till now nothing else, mass momentum energy and p equal to rho rt. Okay. And the flow equations are telling that this is what will happen. according to flow conditions there will be some change in flow condition automatically that will just take care of itself. Okay. Okay. So, we are here, so now we are going to make one extra assumption, I am going to say yes when m equal to 1 things are going to go different, things are going to be very difficult to solve, but let us say we will never consider a case m equal to 1 for now, very important assumption remember this sometime later it will come back and hurt you if you forget this. Okay. I am going to say m is not equal to 1, which means I can now divide this equation by 1 minus m square, okay. otherwise I cannot. So, now I will go write some set of expressions coming because of that. This is the expression I just directly get uh, dividing the previous expression by 1 minus m square, okay. there is a minus sign there also. This is one expression I get, now whatever I derived today I can write everything else in terms of du by u, substitute this in place of du by u in everything I did today. So, if I do that I will get a whole bunch of expressions, I will write one by one. So, you have written all these expressions, all this has been derived only today. Okay. Now, for any given change in my stream tube cross section area, 
because we had 1 d flow stream tube cross section area is our a I pick any stream tube and the cross section area is a and if there is a small change in that we are seeing what will happen okay. that is the idea here. Now, we are seeing that this whole set of expressions on the left the d p d t d rho d u everything will change sign across m equal to 1. If m is less than 1 this term is positive this term is positive this term is positive this term is negative for a given d a by a let us say it is positive. If I go and change m greater than 1 this 1 minus m square changes sign. So, this tells me that the flow does not behave the same way for the same change in area for subsonic and supersonic they are very different and these expressions cannot tell me what the flow will do for m equal to 1 why I assumed m is not equal to 1 already and then divided by 1 minus m square to get to this expression okay, I assumed it I forced that m cannot be equal to 1. So, it cannot be solving m equal to 1 cases okay. remember that common mistakes I am just telling you that also. Now, some more extra details that you can see from here for a given change in area okay, it looks like the least change happens for velocity magnitude wise least change happens to be for velocity. The next least change I do not know whether it is this or this I think it is temperature okay, gamma minus 1 will be less than 1. So, it is going to be this the next change and then the next one is this and then the next one is this okay. temperature changes the least next higher is density and overall much higher is your pressure this is the way it is going to go. Okay. So, the least is this not velocity by the way this is having magnitude of the order of 1 this is having less than that gamma minus 1 for gamma equal to 1.4 will be 0 0.4 that is less than oh, but there is m square. So, I cannot really tell that sure ok. So, this might be the least for small Mach numbers ok. So, yeah depending on Mach number it can change, but the effect is this temperature change is the least next will be density next highest change will be pressure ok. This is what we are seeing from here this will help you later ok. It is giving you a lot more other physical feel I will stay next to this expressions. Now, you want to see the effect of area change for different cases. So, I am going to form this table it is standard available in most of the books. I am going to consider four cases area increasing or decreasing Mach number in less than 1 or more than 1 we said these are the different effects. So, what we want to see is let us look at the subsonic case simple case area is increasing actually from garden hose point of view area decreasing will increase velocity. So, we will start there that is easy to understand area decreasing case is easy to understand we know that in a garden hose we know it is uh, subsonic flow there and I am pressing and velocity increases. So, I know velocity increases there ok. Now, I will go back to these expressions again is that what it is telling I am pressing means I decreased area d a is negative that negative will cancel that we said subsonic this is positive. So, overall d u is positive which is what we are getting here d u is positive means velocity increases ok I put that now I will go back to that expression again for other cases. Let us say I picked this temperature what is going to happen I decreased area I decreased area subsonic this is positive m square is always positive gamma minus 1 is positive whole term is negative because d a is negative ok. 
same thing here this is all positive terms d a is negative. So, density is dropping temperature is dropping density is dropping pressure is also dropping. Okay. So, I am going to write this I will write in that particular order. temperature density pressure all of them dropping in the increasing order of magnitude of dropping. This will drop the maximum temperature will drop the least, but it will definitely drop. Okay. Now, I go to the one picture above till Mach number less than 1 area increases exact opposite of this why all the expressions had d a by a I just have to change sign of d a by a every expression will change sign. So, easy to think about. P rho and P. Okay. Subsonic flow if I increase area velocity decreases. Okay. What happens to Mach number? We did not put that in this whole list. Let us pick this case. What happens to Mach number if I increase area? I increase area, velocity decreases, temperature increases. I have a formula for Mach number. Velocity decreases, temperature increases, denominator increases, numerator decreases, whole thing decreases faster. So, m decreases. And in this case, of course, m increases. Now, we will go to the other case supersonic case. We do not have a m equal to 1 line here, okay. we already assumed that m is not equal to 1 for my gas dynamics currently. So, I go back here if it is m supersonic, all the denominators are going to be negative all the denominators are going to be negative. So, this negative sign will be cancelled by that. So, d a change is directly proportional to u d u. So, if d a is positive d u is positive. Okay. Now, I will go back here. I am going to say area increases d a is positive. So, velocity will increase. Okay. That is the main thing. If area decreases velocity will decrease easy to write that is the easiest thing. Next we will look at the other terms here. So, when I look here now I have denominator negative we said supersonic flow everything else is positive. Let us say d a is positive then d p will be negative because this is negative ok. Here this is a positive quantity this is positive this denominator is negative if d a is positive then this is negative same thing here this is negative numerator is positive if d a is positive d rho is negative d rho is change is negative which means it is decreasing change is negative d a is positive change is positive means it is increasing. So, if my area is increasing t rho and p are decreasing. And if it is the opposite, then this will also be opposite. Now, we will go back and look at Mach number again. I am having supersonic flow and I am increasing area, I am having velocity increasing and temperature decreasing. Velocity increasing, temperature decreasing, Mach number will increase. here Mach number will decrease. Okay. So, what we are seeing is overall the flow behaves very differently for subsonic I will draw one more line here across this border subsonic okay. it is behaving in one particular way and it is behaving straight opposite in supersonic. Very important thing to remember if we go and look at the expressions for various k 
case is as in if I plot all these functions, if I take these functions and plot them for a given change d a, then you will find that the functions will switch sign and it will all go to infinity when m equal to 1, which is obvious right. 1 by m square is here, when m equal to 1 this whole function goes to infinity. Okay. There is too much change that is needed for flows very close to m equal to 1 and of course, our theory is not valid at m equal to 1 remember that these expressions are all invalid for m equal to 1 that is also there one more thing we need to think about. Okay. Now, there is only one part left which is I want to link what should I do to make my go flow go from subsonic to supersonic this is the only part left. Let us see what can I do I am starting with subsonic we said and I want to go end up in supersonic. So, I am here m less than 1 I start with very low velocity I want to increase velocity or increase Mach number. So, I have to go this path area should decrease for me to increase Mach number till where can I go maximum only up to m equal to 1 because beyond that this is not true. So, I will keep on decreasing area till m equal to 1 after that I still want increase Mach number what should I do I go to this column and suddenly I see only if m is greater than 1 this will work is my m greater than 1 yet no it just became slightly less than 1 and I do not know what happens at m equal to 1 ok. There is a small gap, but let us say we ignore it somehow it got pushed to the other side. So, I am sitting here slightly more than 1 1.01 or something and now for my Mach number to increase this will decrease now this will be the one increasing if it increases only only if a is greater than 1. So, now all this time I was decreasing my area now I have to increase my area for it to go accelerate further why is this so. Why is it so the answer is already in the expressions I gave today and one point I told you notice that this is happening ok those are the points where there is answer go and look at it it looks like there is not enough time for me to complete the next thing which I started. So, I will do that uh, next class you guys have any other questions okay. just go think about that particular part why is it so why should I expand past m equal to 1 for me to go supersonic answer is already there on the board in fact okay. see you guys next class.